Hi, I'm Paweł Spychalski and today let me show you how to verify a JWT token with JavaScript and Node.js. Bear in mind, this will be a code walkthrough. For the JWT theory and the information on how the JWT framework works, I have a separate video, the link is in the description. So today, today only JWT, JavaScript and Node.js. In the scope of today's video, I will show you how to generate an example dummy JWT token. We will set up required NPM dependencies, decode the token, check if the token issuer is on the list of the allowed issuers, load the public key of the issuer and check if the token signature matches the public key we just downloaded from the issuer itself. So. Let's go. To start working with JWTs, you do not have to set up the keycloak or other token issuer. The internet is full of JWT generators. I'm using the one from Scott Brady. With his tool, the token generation consists of two parts. First, we have to generate the issuer key. This is a super simple process. You only have to set up the algorithm and hit generate key and then generate the JWT and sign it with the key generated above. You can either use one of the provided templates or set up the claims by yourself. In this example, I only added the ISS claim because this is the claim we will be verifying later in our code. Do not close the page. We will copy both the JWK and JWT to our code as a mox later. To verify the JWT, we will use three external libraries. The first of them is the JSON web token from out zero, which will do the heavy lifting, including token decoding and the verification. The JWK to PEM will allow us to run the conversion of the JWK to PEM format so that we will be able to run the public key verification. And finally, the Axios. Bear in mind, in this example, we will not really use the Axios HTTP client because we will mock the response of the issuer and the JWK. WK response, but when you will want to verify the real token, you will have to contact the issuer and request the public key from the issuer. This is why one of the lines will be just commented out and replaced with the local mock. But besides that, it should be exactly the same in the real life example. By the way, do me a favor, hit the like button and write in the comment on what you think about this tutorial. Thanks, it means a lot and it helps to grow the channel. The source code is available on the GitHub, the link is in the description. In the beginning, let's import dependencies and let's set up the mocks. Because, like I said, we are mocking the issuer public key response. This and the incoming token will be just hard-coded over here. The important constant is the trusted issuers, which holds the list of the issuers which are allowed to access our service. This is why we have to have the list of the issuers we trust and the issuers we allow to access our infrastructure. In our case, there is only one entry and this is exactly the same value that we used when we generated the token. The interesting code begins at the bottom with the function verify. We will begin by decoding the token. Bear in mind, decoding the token only, like the name says, decodes the token and checks if the syntax is correct. Bear in mind, the decode method only decodes the token, but does not check the validity. It will return you the decoded token as the array if the syntax is okay or just empty value if the syntax was not okay. You cannot rely only on the decode method to check if the token was valid. You have to take extra steps. In our case, the first extra step will be to, well, throw error if the decoded token was empty. That means the syntax was not okay. Next, we will verify if the issuer of the token is on our trusted issuer list. Remember the constant we defined in the beginning of this video? Yeah, this is it. If the issuer is on the list, 
we pass follow. If not, then one more time we throw the error as we don't know this issuer, we cannot trust it, we do not consider this token as the valid one. The final step is the verification if the token is valid. This is done by the verify method. The verify by itself will check if the date of the token is okay, that means if the token have not expired. But for the verify method to check if the signature on the token is is fine and it matches the public key of the issuer, we have to provide the verify method with the public key of the issuer. So what we have to do first is to get the public key of the issuer using in our case the mocked response and then check if the id of the key is contained in the response of the server because remember the issuer can have multiple keys used to sign multiple different tokens and the token itself holds the information which public private key pair was used to sign it and for the verification we have to use the same key pair this is why we have to parse the response of the issuer and get the public key that was part of the key pair public private used to sign it. We are not interested in the response of the verify method because at this moment the only information we are interested is will the verify method throw the exception or will it not throw the exception? If it throws the exception, that means that our JWT token is not valid. Let's run it and see if it works. So far, so good. So let's follow to the verify method. Step one, decoding of the token. As you can see, the token was decoded correctly. That means the syntax of the token is fine. We have the header, we have the payload, we have all of our claims set up before. So we can continue further down the road. Now let's check if the issuer is on the trusted list. Yeah it was so we follow through and now let's see if the verification including the checking of the signature of the token works as well. Worked that means we can safely return the token and at the end the token was verified and we can follow to the successful conclusion of this code. If for any reason the token was not valid, so let's for example just break the syntax of the token and if we would run the code right now we would see that well it successfully failed to decode the token because it was the invalid syntax and so on. As you can see in this example the verification of the JWT token with the JavaScript and the Node.js is a relatively simple process. Bear in mind what we just learned is only the authentication. We only check the identity of the call. We have not run the authorization. Authorization is a completely different topic and was not covered in this example. So far we only know that the token that the client used to contact our service is valid and should be accepted but does not tell us anything if the user, the identity, has the permission to do so yet. If you would like to know more about the JWT model authentication and authorization, here's the video for you. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching and, like always, happy coding!